If you ever watch TV or movies, you see those jumbo jets flying in the air in a commercial or something, or maybe read a magazine and you see those beautiful shots. You ever wonder how they're done? Well, today I'm really lucky and you're really lucky as well because we're gonna find out how it's done. Just recently, Air Canada unveiled their new livery. You may have already seen the design on some planes as they're slowly rolling out. Just in case you're wondering why are they repainting all their planes, it's because these aircraft need to be repainted every 10 years anyways. So this is the best opportunity to freshen things up. With new livery, you need new marketing materials. And the video and photos produced on this shoot will be used for the next decade, so it's a pretty big deal, and one that takes quite a bit of planning. We've been working on this flight for, it's been a, a couple months now, it all gets triggered from the marketing department, our photography group, and uh, they come to us. We start working with the, uh, the photo company. There's a lot of prep work that happens between when it first gets initiated and now, so uh, it really has ramped up in the last couple of weeks where we have to arrange fuel contracts and special air, airspace provision. Talk about ramping up. This shoot isn't even supposed to happen until tomorrow, but seeing that a weather system is coming in, both crews make arrangements to get out for a couple of hours before the end of the day and the rain rolls in. Our president of the airline wants nice blue sky. And blue sky, bright, 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 bright sun. Bright sun, sun blue sky, yeah. But the sun stays pretty low after, yeah. pretty low. The only thing we do have is high cloud coming in so we won't get the twilight as long. We're going to go up the mountain range too. Maybe we should do that first. Anyway, let's do 6.30, I think. 6.30 six, six start for probably a 7 o'clock launch. So hopefully we'll get two six right. We'll see if they'll give it to us. Right. The Learjet will blast off and make a circuit, which is right traffic. And we'll ask for you guys to be cleared in the position for departure, and all these breaks will be some tower for you to allow. Yeah. Uh, if you, do you think they would do that? They may. If not, we can decide on an air to air frequency. I'll be on that on number two. And then what you could do is tell them, hey, the Lear the Learjet will stay north of center line at all times, so they never yeah. have to worry about us approaching past the airport. Right. Now that a time's being agreed on, it's ultimately up to the air traffic control and the tower to decide whether this will be approved or not. In that time, while he's doing his downwind, I would go into position with the uh, 787 and be basically given takeoff clearance and holding in position. And when he comes around from his base to final, he'll call, if able, on tower, um, you know, break release or whatever the call is, and then I'll, I'll start my takeoff run, and then he'll come up behind us on the, uh, it'd be the south side. 15 minutes later, and it's a go. What's really cool to see is the professionalism and the passion from everyone involved, including the tower. The, the name of the game is to make this work for you guys. That, that's the soul. And quite honestly, there's a couple guys sitting there, they probably enjoy the show as well, you know? I mean, yeah. Like, this is a... It's got to be a really fun machine to fly, and I feel bad for Kirk because it's only a diamond on his screen. But like, we like watching you guys fly. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, guys, have fun tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, have a good guys. night now. See ya. This is the first of a possible few flights in the next couple of days. After the flight plans are filed, it's time to head out. I'm heading in to a brand new Boeing Dreamliner for this one. I don't think there's going to be a problem getting any overhead bin space today. Here we go. On the right side today of the Dreamliner is Captain Mark Watt. Not only is Captain Watt a veteran Air Canada 777 and 787 pilot, he is also a very accomplished formation pilot and is described from the Wolf Air Crew as being in the top 1% of the pilots they've worked with, making it possible to get some unbelievable shots and making every mission as efficient as possible. B1. Line up 
This is a Learjet 25B. Most people will consider that an old airplane that's been replaced by more fuel efficient aircraft. In fact, we kind of favor the fact that we're using jet engines which burn a little bit more fuel and the reason why is very snappy on the throttle. The type of flying that we do in our mission uh, involves uh, maneuverability and being able to accelerate and decelerate uh, above and below our subject aircraft and it's packed full of camera gear. So we have camera systems inside of it that are looking down through the belly that are full 360 video systems and they're using the highest quality film cameras out, the Reds and the Alexas. Uh, we have cameras that bolt under the wing of the Learjet, and those are our still cameras, the newest DSLR cameras and the 50 megapixel cameras. So simultaneously, we're doing video and stills, which is great. It makes the airplane very efficient. So at the same time, we've got two photographers in the back that are taking videos and stills, and they're talking to me, and I'm positioning this highly maneuverable Learjet around our subject aircraft. For the next couple of hours, we'll be flying the two birds as one. Wolf Air's Learjet will be maneuvering around every part of the Dreamliner as we fly over different areas providing different backgrounds for the photographers. Taking pictures for Air Canada for about 30 years, but it all started uh, before the days of digital photography. I was a darkroom technician for uh, close to seven years and a photographer retired and I became uh, a full-time guy. It never gets boring. This is the dream part of the job when you if you're an aviation guy i've been taking pictures of uh, aircraft but i also take pictures of uh, you know executive portraits and i do uh, food but planes are fun and when you're in the air nobody gets to do something like this this is extreme i want snow-capped mountains i want the ocean i would like ideally white fluffy clouds a little bit of contrast between the aircraft and the uh, in the ground. 2598, state your request and approach for Kemp River. Yeah, play the visual uh, 3 right here. All right, how cool is this? We're actually playing in the clouds. And Air Canada 7169, just confirm, are you going to be heading north west on the airplane? Yeah, we're just going to work this heading. Yeah, we just need to work this, uh, this heading for probably another 10 miles, and we're just going to work back and forth, basically between uh, Tofino and uh, and. Uh, of course we're not doing loops or rolls or anything like that, but the movements and angles of this flight are far from normal. For precision flying, only the best show up for this job. There is a requirement to do formation flying to be a formation qualified pilot, so um, there has to be one on each airplane, so we do have uh, formation qualified pilots on the airplane. So I have a, a really fun background before I got involved with this. I was very fortunate, I was in the uh, RCAF for 20 years, and in, in the RCAF I was a fighter pilot, I flew F-18s and F-5s, and then I was part of the Snowbirds a couple times, once and uh, most recently as the team leader and commander of the team. And I was also the, uh, the air show pilot, the CF-18, so I had an, this amazing career. But I found when I was in the Air Force, uh, I found a love of performing and a love of bringing airplanes to people. And so this was uh, when I had a point in my career where I had to decide what I was going to do. Was, I've got these other things pulling me, including film and television. So I retired from the Air Force and I jumped out and went into film and television. I've done thousands upon thousands of formation flights, whether it was in the Snowbirds or with the jet team I fly now, the Patriots jet team in California. But this is very unique and it's a specialized skill set that you know, I'm very privileged to be learning. But at the same time, uh, knowing that there really only are a handful of people on the, on the planet that get to do this kind of flying. Everybody on the Wolf Air team is very unique is that we're just not aviation guys. 
we all kind of come from the film business as well. So um, we all work in the movie business. We all work on feature films and TV shows. So we're, what we like to think is we take the aviation aspect and then we add the cinematic side in it for customers like Air Canada. So you're not just going to get the, the static shots or the, you know, the, the normal stuff. My team is going to look at it and go, well, if we put this mountain back here and the sparkles on the water and we get it moving in this certain way, that stuff adds a whole different element to, to the you know to the footage we're capturing and gives Air Canada something we think is a little bit more special. 8 o'clock, almost 8.30. We'll leave here for you and it'll front light the right side of the airplane. Going out there. And this time we're going to climb a little bit. I'm going to punch you through, but you're going to stay off that side. If you move forward a little bit more, I'll see a little bit more on that left side of that airplane. This looks great. Even though some of these shots don't look that close, believe me, there were times it felt like you could touch that Learjet. So it's a big airplane. The closer you get, the harder it is to fit the entire aircraft in the image. So there's times where we live between 75 and 150 feet away. That allows us to have a full frame airplane when we're looking from nose to the tail. And then there's times when we're getting more artsy, a little bit more cinematic, and we're moving around the aircraft and we might want to feature some specific design characteristics or a logo, and then we'll move in tighter. So we'll work in tight and we can get within 25 to 50 feet of the wingtip or the top of the rudder, but I'm always drawing an imaginary picture of where that wake turbulence is because that's something we don't ever want to touch on that aircraft. So you're safe to work all over the aircraft as long as you always know where that wake is. Now here's an interesting fact about filming a commercial aircraft. The livery and the logo read correctly, if you think about it, on the left side of the aircraft. So if you're reading a book, you're reading left to right, so on the, on the front end, they're the nose of the 787, you're looking at the logo, Air Canada reading front to back. It's backwards, if you think of it, reading from the tail to the front on the right side. So what we do is we tend to favor the side that reads correctly, because that works well for the advertising department and promo departments. Um, but we also cover the right side just so that the whole aircraft is covered. Now to get the point of view shots from the Dreamliner for you to watch, there are some rules and some challenges. First of all, you can't be visible at all. My clothes have to blend in and I have to stay away from the windows because if I go right up to the window, I could end up in the shot. Think of it as a real expensive photobomb. Yeah, this airplane is a lot more uh, picturesque with this paint job. Uh, <laughs> definitely sells it better for some other paint scheme up here. With the countless years of experience from both crews and cooperation with the weather gods, the shots achieved on tonight's mission are nothing short of spectacular. Here's one of my favorites as we fly right over the city of Vancouver. Does it get any better? Before you know it, this flight of a lifetime is over and we're back on the ground. So there you go. Next time you see one of those commercials or an ad in a magazine, just know that this is not computer graphics. Yeah. It takes an entire team, not just an entire team, but an entire team of very talented people to pull this off. Captain, thank you very much. Thank you. It's great. Good pleasure having you on board. That's thank you. Do. As they say in the film industry, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching and safe travels. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.